Thank you. It is 6 o'clock. I will call the Board of Selectmen December 18th, 2023, meeting to order. We will start with the um, Town Administrator's report from December 2nd through December 15th. So the first item I have there is the Essex Police Association, which is the police union here in Essex, approached the town uh, with respect to field training officer responsibilities. Recently, the standards that are required uh, for the police um, really increased the level of responsibility and liability that an officer that is working as a field training officer uh, incurs. Uh, there are many departments that are moving to a model where a field training officer that's certified for that process um, is provided with a little more pay in recognition of the additional responsibility and liability. Um, the Essex Police Association was no different and um, we have a proposal for the selectmen tonight which would provide $7.50 per hour to any certified field training officer while they are tr training a new officer. Um, it does not carry into their overtime rate. Um, and again, it's by the hour. So if, if, if there's someone that comes in and gets trained for three hours, we don't end up paying for a whole shift. Um, and that proposal is in front of the selectmen for review and appro potential approval tonight. I will entertain a motion to approve the memorandum of agreement between the town of Essex and the Essex Police Association, Mass Cop Local 270, dated December 18th, 2023, titled Field Training Officer Pay. So moved. Second. Is there any discussion? Questions? No? Nope. All those in favor? Aye. 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 <coughs> You did, you did two? No, I only did one and they... Oh, oh yeah, this is for everyone. Yeah, please do both. Do they, both. they wanted their own original. I was going to ask you, I knew they wanted a second. I didn't see the second little sign yeah. there. So there are two originals there. Oh, okay. Um, the next item has to do with the public safety building repairs. Um, we know from a while ago that the building has roof defects and we know the root cause of that was that some panels that are underneath the uh, roof underlayment, uh, the roof underlayment and the shingles um, buckled because they were exposed to water. The town has settled that matter. So that's one of the items. Another group of items has to do with the envelope of the building, uh, the side of the building. This includes some uh, board and batten fastener problems, some color match caulk problems, um, some delaminating cedar shingles, and uh, some trim pieces that are, again, it's an attachment problem. So the board asked for, for me to get a proposal from Copeland um, Building um, Consultants. And Copeland has agreed to work with our roofing consultant, Northeast Roofing. And they did put together a proposal, including a, a cost. Um, I would say that the reason the cost is so high is because they're including in there some very definite coverage for when, this, when these things are eventually addressed in the field. The expert will be on hand making sure that all of it is done properly. We did have a um, clerk of the works when the building was originally built. Um, we know that there were some issues with that. In fact, that person didn't even survive the build. There were some issues with performance, uh, unfortunately. So it's up to the board as to whether you want to look at this uh, as a um, kind of cost of making sure it gets done properly. We could also look at more of a part-time schedule for, um, for on-site during construction. You could also look at whether or not um, you want all of the things looked at, which would 
cut down on the design fee. But I think if you're going to do it, you probably want to do everything at once. It's not going to get any cheaper. Um, in the construction phase, of course, the, and this is just the specification phase, but in the construction phase, you could save money by not addressing the cedar shingles, but then you're going to have a bunch of delaminated shingles and they're not going to look very good. But that's down the road. So what does the board have to say about this type of uh, proposal? I mean, I think it makes sense the way you've laid it out. Um, are we really concerned that we need an expert on site all the time? Uh, or we just for, feel For the in? roof, absolutely. For the roof, yeah, okay. Um, because that's going to be like stripping the roof properly, yeah. assessing each place where that's it needs to be replaced. Sophisticated it's very process. sophisticated. Yeah. Um, for the for the building envelope stuff, it's not rocket science. And so I, my thought is to ask <coughs> Copeland how much they've got figured in for on-site and try to have that refined. We know we're not going to do this in the winter. Right. We have time to talk this sure. back and forth. Sure. But the, biggest, the biggest issue is the longer you wait, the more expensive True. materials right. become. So you may save on Copeland and pay on materials. So we just... Certainly for your next meeting on January 8th, I can have an idea of, of what the options are. I think it's important to have them there for the roof. I'm not as concerned about the building stuff. Building envelope, stuff, yeah, but I agree. I mean, obviously the But it's the probably mostly for alarming. the roof, it, you know. It may be. So, I mean, you know. How do you feel about it, Alva? I am fine with that. Um, um, yeah, I, I, again, I think that having them here for the roof is um, the most important and not that I don't think it's important to have spot checks on the siding to make sure that whoever we you know hired does it properly whether it's Copeland's team or another team I don't know but yeah yeah for example a lot of that work is fastener work and if the work is structured so that they don't put the little covers over the screw holes immediately then somebody could come and check all the work to make sure that it was uh, their spacing is correct, and they could even back out a screw here and there to make sure it's into the right place. That was the problem. That was one of our problems was w were they catching on the backside and were they long enough? If well, you they recall. Weren't, they weren't catching they or weren't they catching weren't long enough? They weren't, so they were supposed to be like 18-inch spacing, yeah. and they would have some that were like 12-inch, some that were 22-inch, so they weren't catching. Yeah. And then when we would pull a screw out and they were calling for one-and-a-half-inch screws, they were one inch. They weren't actually yeah, grabbing right. anything. Right. So I would say, and I'll talk to Copeland about this, there, there's got to be a way to structure the work so that certain telltales are left in place until the inspector comes through. The inspector doesn't need to sit there all day and watch the, every screw go in. Right. But we could just say don't cover them up until our person has taken a good look at it. Okay. So, so I'll, important, yeah, so. I'll get you some more information on that. The next item is the possibility of a school district operations, <laughs> operations review. Um, as the board is aware, neither the school committee to date nor the town of Manchester um, are, have, have indicated that they support any type of review. And the other night at the school committee meeting, we heard from the town administrator that Manchester is still not looking to put any money into a review. The suggestion was that the DESE review be done, which doesn't cost anything, and that Essex could potentially use some of the money that was appropriated to do a peer review of that. But again, that Manchester has not changed their position with respect to the review, even though it was talked about quite a bit at that meeting. Um, with respect to actually accomplishing a review, We've talked to a couple of firms and one, one, private, uh, one public sector group, the Collins Center, and all three of them have said, look, you're really not going to get your money's worth out of a review unless there's some level of, of cooperation with the district. Um, my understanding is that the district intends to talk about this on um, the 19th, which is tomorrow night, and that it's possible that um, the superintendent would, will even be in touch with uh, somebody from the industry before then to learn about what types of things are possible. So I'm hopeful that, um, that the discussion at the school committee 
meeting might open up that, that cooperation, that collaboration. And really that's all I have until we know whether that happens because it's drastically different if they don't. Say there is no, they don't want to um, endorse this. What happens with that 40,000? Can we just keep it until something? Yeah, it, that appropriation up? stays in place until either spent or um, There are three things, but if you don't do a project, one of them is off the table. So project's over and the selectmen declare it okay. finished, right? We can do and that. And so that, yes, but if you don't do a project, that's off the table. Project is done and the money is spent, yeah. right? Um, or nothing happens right away and the money stays on the table uh, unless town meeting decides to roll it back. Take for that, that For that purpose. So right. if a year Well, from only now, for that purpose, yeah. Or six months from now, it's decided that an audit needs to occur and everybody agrees, then we have our funds available already. Yep. The only thing that would change that would be town meeting right. saying, we want to roll it back and some, somehow a motion yep. comes for that. Okay. Anything else on that? I'm just wondering if the school committee supports an audit, what does that mean? That means in Manchester still isn't. So we don't really have full support anyway, regardless. But of we it. understand from the people that we talked to that for $40,000, there are certain key things that can be done that right. would be substantive and beneficial to the, okay. to the understanding of the situation. Okay. So that, you know, but again, without, the, without that cooperation, no one, none of these reviewers are telling us that it would be any great uh, yeah. okay. thing to undertake. You're not going to get your money's worth. With respect to the natural gas contract, the board recalls we were under a fixed rate contract at about 60 cents per therm, Constellation New Energy, and that was for the last four years. We were getting ready to renew with Const Constellation New Energy, and they meant they indicated to all their customers that they were not going to renew any gas contracts. They honored every contract that they had until its end. They got out of that space though. So then there were only two companies that will do commercial fixed rate gas. One of the companies is not even returning calls and that's been months. The other one is NRG, formerly known as Direct Energy. <coughs> and there was recently a precipitous drop in the cost of um, electricity because what we are still doing is we are working with Constellation, even though we have another year left on the electricity fixed rate contract, um, Constellation will do something with electricity where you can actually lock in a rate for the next four years, even before the contract expires. And so we're on a monitoring, um, what's called market watch with Constellation at this point in time. And every week they send us the pricing on electricity there was a precipitous drop in electricity pricing. What does that mean? That means that there was a precipitous drop in natural gas pricing because electricity is dependent on natural gas. Um, and so we're already working with Constellation because they're going to stay in the electricity business to come up with a good situation for the next four years for electricity. With respect to natural gas, the monitoring that's going on with Constellation is what has allowed me to know, hey, gas dropped. So I talked to NRG again. I'm like, did you see this? It dropped. And they said, yes, we saw that. And they were up around, uh, let's see, 60, 97 cents when the board first talked about this. It was like a couple months ago. And then I said, well, you know, there was this big drop. They'll come down as low as 79.9 cents, which is still high. Remember, we were at 60. Okay? Yeah, right. They'll come down as low as that for only a one-year contract. And we just got our first bill today from National Grid because, remember, we were thrown onto default service for gas supply. That rate is 81 cents. So going in with NRG for a year at 79.9 is just not worth it. So what I'm going to keep doing, I'm hoping that if that trend continues and it's sustained long enough, that is going to keep eroding NRG's pricing. They said that we could get a lower price if we 
had more usage, but were considered small commercial. We're not even medium sized. Right. And so we're getting the highest price fixed rate commercial because of the tier that we're in. Yeah. Okay? So I'm basically I'm just updating the board saying we're going to continue to monitor this with Constellation to do what's probably called a blend and extend. They blend the rate you're at now, which I think is like nine cents is electricity for kilowatt hour. That might go up a little for the balance of the last year, but then you've got a sweet price for the four years after that. And you want to try to do that when you see the market dip because the market could shoot up again. Yeah, definitely. Okay, so I will get back to you with the, the board already authorized the chairman to sign a gas contract when the time is right. Um, electricity will keep monitoring and I'll bring that to the whole board. So that's that discussion. The tentative budget hearing, which I talked about a little bit earlier, um, you know, the, the district has indicated that it is a um, level services, what they call carry forward budget. At the hearing, they indicated that that means there are no cuts and there are no additions. It's just carrying things like health insurance and what that does to a budget, uh, contractual wages and what that does to a budget. The average um, teacher increase is about 4% because they not only have the cost of living increase, they have the, the grade increase. So it's not just two and a half. Whereas um, people that work for the district that are not teachers, they're, they're increasing at two and a half percent. They're holding 9% for health insurance, hoping that it's, that it's lower, every $40,000 lower, uh, every, I'm sorry, every percentage point lower in health insurance is about $40,000 worth of savings. Uh, in, they indicated out of district placement, which is an expensive part of the budget, is up 4.8%. Some of that has been offset by um, some special ed savings. And maintenance on buildings is up by about 4.6%. Uh, at this point in time, why is maintenance up that much just because was it stuff that was deferred? They feel, well, no, they're starting to, uh, the buildings are starting to, particularly the middle school, high school, starting to age. Yeah, so they need and to. And so now that. they're kicking in some midlife stuff that would, wasn't carried in the earlier years, yeah. is what was explained to us. Um, the the uh, carry forward budget is 3.45% overall, but as you know, with the apportionment, that's. A, about a $501,000 increase to Essex, which is 5.31% on half the town's budget. And Manchester is only 2.35%, which is about $377,000. Um, you know, our proposition two and a half levy increase is only about $350,000. And we're looking at 501 just for the school. That's 150,000 beyond the capacity before you even start funding increases for the town. Um, so, the, you know, those are some of the key points that were discussed at the um, hearing. I don't know if the board has any questions or comments at this time. Just a comment that's related to this. Um, when I attended the finance committee meeting last week, it was, there was a lengthy discussion, obviously, about the um, regional school district and the expense associated with such and modeling and projections over the course of the next five years. And basically, their position is that the apportionment is going to be hitting Essex because of the enrollment number, right. which is the number that um, the town administrator and myself and the chair of the Board of Selectmen of Manchester and the town administrator there, we were talking about looking at the regional agreement because of that enrollment portion and potentially EQV, um, which that's been set aside at the moment, but those enrollment numbers skew things quite a bit. And because the Manchester number of students has dropped by 80, and even though Essex only <coughs> increased by 13, it's that because of the apportionment formula, it really Rob. messes things up, um, that we'll be looking at a serial override for the next five years. So if this budget continues to come in over at the two and a half, we will end up looking at an, an override each year for the next five years. And who knows what it looks like beyond that. I don't think that they started modeling out further because um, we know that then we'll be looking at an override for the elementary school anyway. But just it's important to note that that could be something that... And there's nothing... To, there's no reason to expect it not to come in at something similar to what this budget increase is 
as well <coughs> in the coming years. No, because the prediction is that the disparity in in uh, pupil count is is continue is going to continue to get worse for Essex. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Anything else on that? So moving to the town's the selectmen's preliminary operating capital budgets. This is not due until January 8th, but that's your next meeting. I'm uh, sorry, January 10th, but you're going to have a meeting on January 8th. So there's no reason to talk about this in any great detail tonight. I know it's a lot of information. If you had any uh, early comments, that's fine. But even if you vote changes or want to go through some things in January, I, I have time to, to amend this and get it turned in. I'm going to take more time to really make notes. Great. And if you, if you do have any comments in the meantime, let me know, because that will give me a chance to get going on it or to research it for, you, for your next meeting. Okay. The next item is the fact that we share a color sewer inspection camera with the town of Rockport. It's five years at a time, the agreement that governs it. The agreement is up this year. And uh, the superintendent, Michael Galley, is in favor of extending the agreement with a new successor agreement. Uh, so right now, I did reach out to the town administrator in Rockport and asked whether they're interested in the same. And I haven't heard from him by tonight meeting time. But I recommend that the board authorize the um, signature of a successor agreement if if Rockport indicates that they are in favor of it and we won't know until we know but we would assume that there would be no um, expectation of changes that it would just be a new right. date and everything that's would be right. held the same okay. that's my expectation that would be Ruth's signature uh, what did we do last time it was all three all three so that would be an authorization for the board to sign it outside of a meeting uh, in the form that it's in now um, yeah. When Rock, if and when Rockport is in agreement. When does it expire? The end of the year? Uh, no, it's, it came up in November. So. Oh, okay. <clears throat> so what happens if Rockport doesn't want to? Uh, let's see what it says here. We agreed to the cost of sharing the insuring insurance of the unit. I think it's fully depreciated, so it's not like there's a lot of value in it. The value on it is that we can put our hands on it and use it if and when we need it. When do we typically do that? When you have sewer main blockage, if they need to actually feed a camera down, see how far down the main it is, if they have to dig a hole. So if you have a main that's 100 yeah. feet and there's a blockage, they'll send the camera down, they'll determine that it's 20 so feet no in, routine, and they'll know it. no routine survey that's done um, to look and see the conditions, no? Not, not as a rule. Yeah. Okay, so it's only it's, it's usually an emergency yeah. situation. And you can use it in storm drains, too. Yeah. Now, what it says in the agreement that, that expired November 12, after a period of two years, both towns, which is long past, have the option to buy the other town's half of the unit based on depreciation determined by the dealer or manufacturer of the unit. Like I said, it's pretty much fully depreciated. So... It, if it does get dissolved, then perhaps, and, and Rockport says no, then maybe we get a couple hundred dollars. I mean, it's not, yeah. you know. So we'll see what happens. We also have an assistant plumbing inspector that owns his own camera that I'm sure he would loan to the water department if they needed it. Okay, so I will entertain a motion for the board to authorize the signature of a successor agreement outside of a meeting if Rockport sends that agreement and wants to move forward with that relationship. So moved. Second. All those in favor. Aye. 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 The last item in my report has to do with the technical assistance program from the Metropolitan Area Planning Council, MAPC. This is a program that we've taken advantage of over the years quite frequently. And it will technically fund things like the affordable housing trust housing production plan but we're being told that at 80 to 100 thousand dollars and based on the size of the town and the amount of technical assistance that we've gotten from mapc over the past few years it would not be likely that something like that would get funded for that i think we want to wait for the um one stop for growth in the spring to see if they'll fund at least a portion of it 
and I know that the Affordable Housing Trust is going to meet in January to go over the options. One of the options is to have one done in cash because they have the cash, but it would be great if we could leverage it with a grant. And so, you know, what, what might we take advantage of instead with respect to this technical assistance grant program? Well, the um, town's open space and recreation plan is coming to its expiration date, end of shelf life, and it would be good, and I'm told by MAPC, that they do fund this type of thing, and we really don't have the expertise in-house to do it. They helped us uh, with it two times ago, and Matt Coogan, the former town planner, helped it with us the most recent time. Um, but if we could get MAPC to do it through the technical assistance program, I think that I should apply for that. <coughs> the How much do you think it would be? Um, I can tell you. They say, give an estimate for Essex. Somebody said something about it. I think he said it was, you know, several tens of thousands, but not 20 or 30 yeah. or something like that, yeah. And he says it's much more likely that's, that's the type of thing that would probably fund. Uh, so uh, if the board is okay with it, there's an online application that I can turn in even now. The deadline, I think, is early January. I can get it in there and then um, see whether they put that on their schedule. Um, and it's mostly for the fact that in the open the strategic plan, there's a commitment to making sure that the open space plan and the management of open space moves forward in a similar fashion to what's always been done. There are some state grants that you can't get unless you have an open right. space plan in effect. We've never gone for those grants, so I would say at this point it's more about staying true to that pillar of the strategic plan. And so if we can get it done with a grant, then all the better. And this process is really just updating the existing, so you're not starting yes. from scratch. Correct. You're just taking what's there and modifying Correct. it. Yeah. Yep. So does the board want to authorize me to do that? <coughs> I will entertain a motion to authorize the town administrator to apply for an MAPC grant for the open space and recreation recreational plan. planning. Plans. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Anything else before we That's move it. On? Perfect. I will entertain a motion to approve the weekly warrant in the amount of $940,566.17. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I will entertain a motion to approve the minutes for the Selectmen's December 4th, 2023 open meeting. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I will entertain a motion to review and approve the updates to the various IT-related policies and inventories. So moved. Second. Any discussion? You know, I mean, it looked pretty it's, good. It's the same that we see every <laughs> yeah. year. <laughs> yeah, it was recommended by our auditor, so we yeah. put it together. This has been updated for some changes that have occurred, and we'll annually look at it. Every and I don't have the expertise to question any of it. <laughs> and does this, so does this get um, distributed to all facilities so that all employees know this plan, this procedure? Um, it did, it did last year, but I don't know if they've, they haven't seen this yet. Okay. But they do sign off on the IT security policy right. every year when they do their right. sign-offs for the ethics, the, um, all of the things that they sign off on, right. the IT policy. So, Alva, they do see this. But they haven't seen this version Not of this it version. Yet. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I will entertain a motion to consider a request from Woodman's Lobster Pool, 119 Main Street, to close from January 2nd until January 11th, 2024, for cleaning, maintenance, and repairs. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I will entertain a motion to vote to accept a donation in the amount of $150 to the police gift account from the Manchester Essex Rotary Club. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I will entertain a motion to vote to accept a donation in the amount of $250 to the police cruiser gift account from Elwood and Susan Philhauer. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 So next is further discussion of the town administrator's suggested goals for calendar year 2024. So at the last meeting, we were provided um, some goals that the town administrator provided. Um, 
to discuss, see if we like them, if we wanted to keep them, add to them, remove any of them. And does the board, I have one that I want to talk about, but Peter and Alva, do you have anything? <coughs> no, I, I don't think so. I think it's pretty comprehensive for what we know now. I mean, if you look at Brendan's goals that he achieved last year, there's like 30 of them that weren't on many, the list. Many more things will come that happens <laughs> yes, every, it happens so. every year. <laughs> yes. Um, so the only one, the only thing that I've always thought about, even from my days being on the school committee, is, you know, we have this um, quarterly board, boards, boards meeting, <laughs> um, and putting a little clarity around what our expectations are for each of the boards when they come up, you know, setting something that says here's what we're looking for, whether, you know, it could be we're looking for accomplishments, for, you know, this, that. I think it would be help them to understand um, and not have it be a monotonous, why am I going to this board's board's meeting? <laughs> that yeah. was my comment. So you want, to have, <laughs> you want to have one of the goals be? That we, def we define that. We create something to be able to provide to all of our members that are on the different boards to say when you, we have the quarterly, this is what the select board is looking for. So you want an outline it's for an each outline. thing. Yep. So what your achievements are, what your <coughs> obstacles are, what your anticipated yep. expenses are. Typical type of heads up type of thing, things that end up having, you know, need to be known. And it also allows for, you know, the school to hear what the water department's going through or the, you know, that type of thing. Just so that we, you know, Right, so you, you, you're asking me then to first come up with something for the board to review as to what the expectation should be, and then as each one comes around, make sure that all of the people that are coming are prepped and reminded of the format. Yeah, I, I do, you know, I, whether it be you, Brendan, or you work with the different boards to come up with your own type of, you know, I just, I think that I, I just feel like I'm hearing, I heard that they don't know what to say. Right. So and I EDC, don't want it to just be the happy part because there are obstacles that we need to make sure we're aware of. So the EDC did present to the Board of Selectmen a format that they wanted to see. I thought it was very involved in a lot of work. It was almost, it was almost a full-time job just to fill it out right. to come to a meeting, so that was a lot. I think if we had a format where it was just four bullets like achievements you know goals achievements obstacles and concerns the part i would add is um grants so you know whether it be essex tech or it be manchester essex or it be us if if we if, if we're going after grants we need to know what that means in the long run so you know if it's a grant that only covers something for three years and then it's going to have to go into the operational budget that should be known mm -hmm. And again, it's just an informational, it's not, we're not gonna beat them up about it, but at least we understand the types of grants. And then maybe down the road we'd think about, okay, how do we you know, pull this in a bit? I don't know. I, at this point, we don't get anything except after the grant's been approved. Well, you, all the grants come to you to get approved. Right. Not at the schools. That's what I'm talking about. Oh. oh. Uh, yes, yours, I mean, I think you go through a lot of the grants with a fine tooth comb. Every single one, because <laughs> that's my role. But, so you're saying I would work with the district to understand better and pull that from them, what's going on. I mean, that, that can be done. I, 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 I don't know if it's all right away, but I think at some point, because of the fact that, you know, when I was on, even on Essex Tech, and they were going after all these grants because they had a phenomenal grant writer, that's great, but what does it mean for the budget? You know, yes, you can add 600 kids to the thing, but can we afford 600 oh, kids? Do, yeah, right? after yeah. three years. So, but that comes back down to it's a department quarterly head meeting, so that would be up to the school committee chair to report out what the grants are that they're they've applied for or going to apply for, and tell us what that means to the town. I mean, I could put budget. into the framework if you wanted me to come up with the framework and you wanted me to at least remind everyone who's coming to this in advance when the memo goes out. Remember, this is the framework. Please come prepared to talk about this. I could put together, I could write up the goal so you can look at it in January to make sure that I captured it right. And then if you like it, then my first step would be to write the framework and then throughout the year to try to help drive 
the meeting toward those Yeah, those and I points. don't think it has to be an immediate thing. I just feel like right now it's they show up and, and sometimes they have things and other times they just don't show up because they don't know what to say. And, and I think it would be helpful. Yeah, giving them guidance. It's some guardrails about what we want to hear about. <clears throat> so that would be the only thing that I would say, like, for future. And I, and I honestly don't want to put a jest on you. You know, the select board is here and... We've all been on right, multiple but since meetings. this is about the goals you want me to take on, I can definitely put together a framework that you can look at and say, okay, yeah, that's your part's good or whatever Wonderful. for the next meeting. Perfect. Okay. Yeah, that's a good one to add. Peter, did you have anything on the goals? I do you're, not. You're pretty good. Okay. So my only, mine's more kind of a question conversation. Number two, explore the possibility of grant funding for a road across the town owned parcel at 30 Apple Street between Apple Street in the town transfer station DPW facility, a portion of the funding for the road may be possible via coastal resilience grant and moving forward may be dependent on whether other uses are being considered for that par parcel, both from a timing and a physical perspective. So you've heard me discuss 30 Apple Street and I am, I am certainly the selectman that brought forward the road from Apple Street to the transfer station after former selectman Ed Neal brought this to us um, back actually when B.J. Fry was alive. He brought it to the Board of Selectmen and at the time we said we're certainly not interested in taking something by eminent domain for a road, but when the time comes, if the town actually has the opportunity to buy it, we will revisit it. So the DPW in water department is very passionate about wanting um, to connect the water. So we have water that comes down Landing Road and water that comes up Apple Street. They both cross a bridge. If one of those goes out, you could lose water to one or the other. So connecting the water and putting in a road would be extremely important and beneficial, especially with emergency re response and getting our equipment out of the DPW yard. So I am passionate about this goal and I love it. I'm just feeling like it's slightly premature because you've also equally heard me talk about um, the elementary school and the possibility that using 11 and a half acres of flat, higher, dry area might be a better opportunity than the wet mm. nine acres that we currently sit on. And it's not that we can't do it. It's been there for 50, 60 years, and it's been fine. However, we also know that if we're going to do new construction, we're going to do the same thing that Manchester did, which is going to cost more money because you're going to build around the envelope and then deconstruct after. There is a huge cost associated with trying to build around an existing structure, and I don't think we're going to put it behind the building because it's all wet. And if we put it in front and then remove, you know, it, it's just not... From a construction standpoint, it's not going to be the most cost-effective approach. We don't even know that that's and going to be allowed. even the design itself is constrained because you only get half a site. If you don't have any constraints, then the design can actually create more cost-effective things in the first True. place, yeah. let alone the cost of working around it. There's like two things in there. So, so the only comment I have about that is, or question I should say, so if we, if we did look at doing that for the water, We'll hold the school off until another vote is had. Um, would we? I would assume that we would have to increase Landing Road, um, the bridge strength. I don't know. I mean, it just seems like it would have more traffic, um, especially if the school went in there. And that that concerns me. definitely. It may be that you have. It might be one way traffic where there's one way in and one way out of the school. So that's ab absolutely a real possibility. But you also. If you held the money on this potential funding from um, a coastal resilience grant opportunity and you are building the school, then your site work, so the water line and the, the road would be done as part of the construction yeah, project okay. and you might be able to use this grant funding to replace the bridge not only on Landing Road but maybe even on Apple Street because you are going to have increased traffic and weight, you're going to have buses, you're going to have, yeah. so, yeah. but you could use that right. grant funding. And I now. started to look into that already, by the way, and... Um, the, the MVP program said, no, we would not fund you just putting in a road and saying this is great for the future because if we lose the culvert at Landing Road, we have another alternative. They're saying we'll look at bridges and culverts that need to be done right now, but we're not going to look at something else. They suggested that I get in touch with the Office of Coastal Zone Management, which I have, but I haven't heard back yet. Yeah, okay. I mean, it is... It is it a culvert or a bridge? It's a bridge, right? It's a culvert. Oh, it is a culvert. Okay. It's a and it very big culvert. Yeah, yeah, it's a huge culvert. Okay. What um, steps would need to be taken? I know this is down the road for us to 
um, authorize the school to be built on that site? I mean, do it's we part have, of the building project. Yeah, but do we have to go back to town meeting for the use or anything like that? or The vote for the purchase of the property, I think just left it in general for general municipal purposes, which I think would be, you know, we'd have to verify that with council. Yeah. But I think it actually would allow. Yeah. Us okay. To do so that. it could be a decision made in house. Um, Possibly. Yeah. And, and certainly, this isn't a decision that the Board of Selectmen is going to make by themselves. This no, is, you know, no. we want to talk to the district to make sure this would be a location that they would be happy about. But you look at the differences. You have yeah. 11 and a half acres versus nine. You have flat, high, dry, you know, Logic wet. would dictate that. Logic would dictate that it would yeah. be a great spot. But equally, um, MSBA would dictate some of this because they're going to yeah, come in and do an analysis. Say, MSBA, you have to come in with alternate sites. Yep. Right. Building, you know, doing addition uh, in the yeah. current location versus replacement. Yeah. And right. then doing a replacement in the current site. So right. again, well, logic would dictate. Yeah. So one of this goal could be amended to say that to the extent that the town has the ability to inject this site into the review process, perhaps I should be tasked with doing that I don't know sure I mean if we can alter this goal I, I don't dislike the goal I actually love the goal I just feel like the goal might be too premature right. I but don't want to put a road and water in and it to say that the school in at least for this year um, I would have the backing from the selectmen to say you know it's something that we are thinking about it is okay to consider that in the in the process sure in the the Essex elementary uh, is in the process of um, you know, being at least looked at. Considered. Yeah. So it's, I don't think it's too early to, to consider that. All right, so what I can do along with the new goal that we talked about is I can amend this and bring it to the board for further review at the next meeting. Perfect. I will entertain a motion to vote to hold the annual town meeting on Monday, May 6, 2024, starting at 6.45 p.m. at the Essex Elementary School. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I will entertain a motion to vote to open the warrant for the annual town meeting and accept articles for inclusion in the warrant until 3 p.m. on Wednesday, March 6, 2024. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I will entertain a motion to vote to accept reports for the annual town report until noon on Thursday, February 1st, 2024. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, discussion with respect to choosing a date for the 2024 special town meeting. And that's the fall we're talking fall town about. Meeting. Not, not another. No. Right. It's, it's it has meeting. to be called a special town meeting. Right. So we say it's the um, special town meeting known as the fall town meeting. Yeah. Because there was one year we had like Three yeah. specials in yep. a year. But this year, so generally it's the second Monday in November, and this year that falls on Veterans Day, so we need to look at what I we want to do. The 18th. The 18th. Yeah. That's fine with me. It's, it's you don't, far enough in advance of when's Thanksgiving? The, the 25th. November, November 18th? Oh. Is it the 21st or is it the 28th? So 28th. Sorry. Yeah, so that works. That works. So is that all right with the board? Fall town meeting. The bylaw says when it conflicts with Veterans Day, the board chooses the date of the fall town meeting. <coughs> yeah, I think so. All right, so no, November 18th, do you want to do a vote yep, on that? Absolutely, so I will entertain a motion to vote to choose November 18th, 2024 for the date of our 2024 special town meeting. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And I wanted just to mention under other items, and I know you have other things to do, we got a letter today from the governor and the lieutenant governor indicating that there'll be about 71,000 additional dollars put in our chapter 90 account. Ooh. Uh, this is something called the fair share amendment. It says passed by voters in 2022, the fair share amendment requires that revenue raised by the 4% surtax on taxable income over 1 million be spent on public education and transportation. This apportionment continues to demonstrate the administration's support in strengthening municipal partnerships. And so with respect to the transportation piece, since we don't have our own school district, chapter 90 is gonna be increased by $71,000. Now with respect to education, I haven't heard anything yet. Maybe I should look into whether the district got a similar letter because it would probably be for a lot more than. Oh yeah. 
So, but does that chapter 90 go to the town or go directly to the district? No, chapter 90 is road. To the town. Yeah. It's, it's road repairs That's, and road maintenance. Got it. Okay. And it's how we use chapter 90 money to buy dump trucks and plow trucks and do is, paving and potholes. So that is only to be used for only. road. Okay. So because, yeah, because that, 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 that portion's road. coming to the town and the town doesn't have its own school system. And so that money is only, and it says right in the letter, this is going to be put into your chapter 90 fund, yeah. which is the transport, the roads and right. it's not, it's not the school piece, I but I can ask the district whether there was any money from that, that went into education, which you'd think there would be. Yep. That'd be great. Thank you. So under, um, Items that could not reasonably be anticipated by the open meeting law posting deadline. As of this afternoon, we actually received a request from JT Farnham's. So the request reads to the Essex Licensing Board, JT Farnham's is requesting permission to close on December 31st, 2023, reopening March 1st, 2024 for renovations and cleaning. Um, Aguando Ferreira, JT Farnham's. Does anybody have any? Concerns with that? No. Okay. I will entertain a motion to approve the request to close from December 31st, 2023 through March 1st, 2024 for renovations and cleaning for JT Barnum's. So move. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And we can get that on the next agenda for, for official ratification. ratification. And I'm sorry, the, the return date is when? March 1st, I think. Ruth, was so, it March 1st? Oh, uh, sorry. Yeah. March 1st. I will entertain a motion to approve all of the licenses as listed on page two and three of the agenda. So moved. Second. Are there, is there any discussion on any of these? Any license discussion? No. All right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Sorry. Aye. Perfect. Personnel. So as you know, at the last couple of meetings, we've had conversations about the Council on Aging director job position. So the Council on Aging has met several times now and they have perfected their job description. I see that we have Ann Buckley in the audience with us this evening from the Council on Aging board and she's been very instrumental in actually putting all of this together. Ann, do you want to join us at the podium and have a discussion or do you want us just to talk about this or would you like to share anything? I just want to say, first of all, thank everybody, particularly yourself, Ruth and Brendan, for all your guidance and assistance. We've had a group diligently trying to get this all smoothed together with the correct verbiage and matching the intent on both our standing rules and the job description. So if there, I'm here primarily to just be of any further assistance in any questions if anything should come up. So I'm happy to participate if you need me. Otherwise, I'm happy to just sit here and Perfect. listen. All thank right, you. Man. Thank you so much. So I've had the opportunity and privilege of, of going to the Council on Aging board meeting. So I've actually been there through the process of this job description and the standing rules. So I, after having been to the meetings and there for the vote, I'm very happy with the job description and it seems like it fits the bill of everything that they've been trying to capture. So I have no further questions or comments. Um, do either of you have any questions, concerns, comments? So I just have um, one question and that is whether or not is it already documented all of the procedures that this person, um, this you know, um, employee would do, um, or is it something that should be done for future? You know, the routine things that we do and just do them. But if it's not documented, then another person couldn't Doesn't fill the chair. If, so that was one of my questions. If it needed to be in here. And then the other one was, um, I didn't see anything about continuing ed as far as like they have to, I saw the licensing, but I didn't know if there was anything else that was expected. So these are questions, these are not, I, you know, I need to have in there. Well, so you're talking about standard operating procedures and ha making sure that the person documents what they do. Correct. Um, it's certainly something that could be added as an expectation. It's no, there's nothing wrong with adding that. You know, it would be like maintains the standard operating procedures of the Council on Aging with respect to day-to-day -day business or something like that. So I will tell you that prior, when, prior to Kristen leaving, and, and I'm certainly going to let you fill in the blanks, prior to Kristen leaving, when we had a conversation, she let me know that she was giving notice. I did say to her, 
one of the biggest issues that you have when somebody leaves a position and somebody new is coming in is that we take for granted that we just do things. You know, we just automatically, oh, this needs to get done, we'll take care of it. It's not necessarily part of the job description. And I said, what would be super helpful to the board is if you could start documenting your day to day, what you do, the things that people aren't thinking of. Can you put together kind of a mini job description and what those duties entail and then provide that to your chair so that she can present that binder, SOG, you know, policy and procedure, whatever it is, to the next director. So I know that Kristen was working on that, and I'm sure, Anne, do you want to fill in the gaps with that, if you have that? Sure, I'd be happy to address that question, Alva. We have actually raised this question and been working actively for about a year and a half now with Kristen and also with Tess on task mapping so that we could be in anticipation of of future needs. In addition to that, we also have a new board member, relatively new board member, Kurt Siebert, who is phenomenal and is helping us to actually design and implement a document management control system so that we will have we will have all of that at the ready because it is our intent if we're able to to go forward in the future to perhaps look at uh, Mass Council on Aging and perhaps potentially even National Council on Aging certification. So we are also in the midst of doing a gap analysis of over 400 documents that we have right now, which is again being led by by Kurt and supported by the rest of us. So I hope oh. that answers the question. Thank you, Anne. Thank you. And then the second piece, don't leave for one second. The second piece that Alva brings up is actually very important, and I know that even in my industry and in many different licensure, um, professional licensure practices, that you are required to make, to keep your licenses active. So I'm wondering if under license and certificates, it currently reads the following cert certifications must be obtained within the first six months of employment, basic first aid, CPR, serve safe management certification, shine counseling to be attained within a timely manner. I wonder if we shouldn't add a sentence that says in all licenses and certificates must stay active or current because it only requires that you have a basic first aid CPR serve safe. It doesn't say then you must continue to maintain it. So sure. I wonder if that sentence would be important to add there. Sure, we could easily amend that. My question would be would we need to have another meeting in order to, to no. do that we could we just will do that right now okay perfect so are I, you do you think that that makes sense? i think everybody would be very happy with that one of the reasons we didn't we were not more specific about the timeline for the safe serve is that it's not always offered at set intervals and we're not clear as to when the next opportunity would be but but certainly that yeah, if it just says maintain yes. that it's current whatever that means is right is, is what they do right exactly my only question was what other licenses or certificates would be relevant? Um, I'm not sure what SHINE counseling is, but is there something else that would be beneficial for this person to have? The SHINE counseling is actually one of our most popular offerings, and we expect that it will actually, the demand and the need for that will grow over the next few years. And essentially, that is the, the service that we provide when when a resident, and sometimes now outside, residents outside of Essex have been coming and taking part in this as well. It's, it's when our counselors offer guidance to people when they are going on to Medicare and the different choices that they've used. We all see those ads on TV. Yeah. They're helping people, particularly around the drug counseling piece of it. It's I very significant. I should have come to you six months ago. Yeah. <laughs> we also get a lot of family caregivers who are coming in, and at every year there's uh, it's strongly encouraged that people come in and reevaluate where they're at before they just automatically start uh, resign for the next year with what they've had previously. So the counselors are able to do that. The, it's, what's interesting about this is that it's actually, a, the Shine counselors are as volunteer. It is actually not uh, part of, of the certification for a director, but we have felt very strongly about keeping it. Matter of fact, we have actually talked about how much time it takes, and there's been, become an increasing amount of impact on our day-to-day -day operations. So it is yet to be determined how much we will be able to continue to offer SHINE. It is our strong desire to be able to do that. But within the constraints of the 19 hours allocated for the position, 
uh, what else are we missing out on being able to, to do? So we're effectively looking at all of our liaisons on the board and other, how can we leverage more the volunteer potential in town? And that includes, and Brendan and Ruth are aware that we're looking particularly in trying to pull out the amount of hours that our director has spent on facilities, maintenance and management time, uh, so that we can maybe allocate that more to volunteer hours, freeing up that time. So we're, we're just on the cusp of really starting to dig into that. The task mapping that we just referred to was an important piece of trying to understand how the time is being allocated within those 19 yeah. hours. Yeah. yeah. In the shine piece of this, just to kind of piggyback onto that com comment, the shine piece of this is extremely important. So they, the Council on Aging is very inclusive and they want to welcome anybody from surrounding communities to come in because we have had such a str strong shine um, Honestly, Kristen was the director and test does it as well, and they've been so strong with their shine op offerings. However, there are some serious concerns because during shine season, which is like a 90-day period when the yes. window opens and then closes, all of their 19 hours in, it's not really 19 hours, it's been like 40 and 50 hours, and then they've been doing comp time, which isn't allowed in the town. Right. So they're trying to see if they can put some guardrails around that as well and say you can only dedicate eight hours a week to shine because there are still council on aging needs that need to be met by the director. So they're working on that. I think that continues to be on their agendas yes. because they know that that is a concern. So, but I think everything you captured under licenses and certificates was everything that, that the director does. Yeah, that was yeah. my yes. question. Yeah. yeah. Um, yes. Thank you, Peter. And can I just ask as far as this shine, is there grants out there that they could, you know, you can keep an eye out for because I know in talking to some seniors, this they get so stressed at that 90 day, that open enrollment period. So I didn't know if there was grants out there. I think the concern, as we've, as we've talked about, there are a number of people who are recently retired medical professionals here in town who we thought we might be able to tap for the training, et cetera. And there are some, some strong concerns that Kristen has, has made as, and Tess has supported that we haven't done a deep dive into all of that yet, but they have some reservations about this going beyond what is in the control of our paid management staff. And so I think we don't have a good answer for you on whether we would want to pursue anything relative to grants until we understand fully the scope of what is going to be needed. We know that within our own Essex population, we expect to have a, a, a stepped up enrollment for shine counseling over the next four to five budget cycles. Yep. Okay. Anything else? So I will entertain a motion to approve the job description for the Council on Aging Director as presented this evening with a final draft dated 12 12 23 with the one amendment under license and certificates to read that all required licenses and certifications must stay active. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, Ann. Thank you all very much. Have a good evening. You too. Reminders, the next regular Board of Selectmen's meeting will take place on Monday, January 8th, 2024 at 6 p.m., third floor auditorium of the Town Hall, 30 Martin Street, and that the Board will be attending the Finance Committee's Tax Talk Public Forum on January 11th, 2024 at 6 p.m., third floor auditorium of the Town Hall here at 30 Martin Street. That will be recorded. That's the Finance Committee. You'll be receiving that in your tax mailer. You actually have that here. It's little QR codes, and it's going to be a tax talk. It's going to be about the town's overall $20 million budget, how that budget is spent, what excess capacity is, um, what an override means, and uh, the operational budget versus capital expenses, free cash, why we spend that at Fall Town Meeting. So it's going to answer a lot of those questions that people ask throughout the year and always feel like you know they don't know who to talk to. So we will be joint posted for that, and I would love to see everybody there. It's going to be a good talk. Uh, any other? So public comment. Is there anybody online with public comment? There's actually nobody online. And do you have any? Tina is actually not really there. Oh, She's oh, just okay. dialed in. Okay. Um, and do you have any public comment? Other than say thank you again for all of your support, and we look forward to providing you with the next all board meeting with, with some good parameters around our planning for the coming year. Perfect. Thank you thank so you. much. 
All right, having so, Noah. Can I just yes. ask you, there was something this week from um, ABCC, did that happen? That was just a seminar. Uh, no, I know, I didn't get it, I couldn't attend, it was right, oh. I was in the middle of meetings and I didn't know if anybody attended or if there was anything that came from it that we should know about. So it's basically they offer it every year at the end of the year and it's usually um, somewhere in December or beginning of January. And it starts out the year with just kind of knowing it's an FAQ on the ABCC, uh, the do's, the don'ts. There's an awesome uh, question and answer at the end. But they have their legal team go through all of the rules and regs and what you can offer, what you can't offer. Um, that when you give a one-day license, they must buy from a, somebody on the state list. So it's, it's just an awesome presentation. I've attended the last four years. Honestly, it's the same presentation. The only thing that I will tell you is that the presentation is the same, so you don't get a ton out of it. It refreshes your memory. It's the questions and answers that are awesome at the end because people like us, they get these questions, and I'm like, that happened in Essex, and then you get the answer from their legal team, and it helps. I drive Pam and Brendan crazy with it because then I'm like, I heard that on the ABCC meeting, so you should attend the next one. They do offer them throughout, um, usually twice a year, but this is a good one because it's bigger. It's usually two hours. And they were a little different during COVID. They were different, the issues, yes, because the, the outdoor seating. So, and they don't, they don't record it and they don't allow you to, I mean. Maybe they do. They may. I, they may. I'm sure they do. I, I'll look that up for you. They did not, no. Yeah, but it's awesome to watch. You should. Yeah, you just participated in it too, right, last week? And they didn't record it. They didn't, no. okay. I'll try to find something. If you could, because having have. not, I keep signing things and I haven't. <laughs> yeah, so was it the same as the general annual? Generally, yeah. yeah. Um, he, he chose out um, frequently asked questions. He chose out the most frequent and put those forward um, so people would know. Just basically a refresher. Yeah, exactly. For, for somebody who's new to the select board, yeah, it's not a refresher. <laughs> Yeah, no, it, it is great. I would recommend it if there's a recording. That's awesome. Okay, are there any questions from the board before we adjourn? No? Okay. So 7.02 p.m., I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.